he said take my heart it shall be your loyal throne and he he was able to spell out that God is interested with the whole of you and that is his expectation actually when you were born by the grace of God you came to know at some point that you were created then as days went by you came to know that there was salvation and you received the Lord Jesus Christ as a savior. And as time goes by, you realize it's not enough to be saved. When you are saved, you accepted the Lord to be your Lord. You submitted to his will so that he will direct you. So he was surrendering the whole of his life. And this morning, I want us to look very briefly to uh, some verses. And I want us to read from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, in Amplified Version. To the angel, divine messenger of the church in Sardis, write. These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name, reputation, that you are alive. But in reality, you are dead. Wake up. And strengthen and reaffirm what remains of your faithful commitment to me, which is about to die. For I have not found any of your deeds completed in the sight of my God or meeting his requirements. So, remember and take to heart the lessons you have received and had. Keep and obey them and repent. Change your sinful way of thinking and demonstrate your repentance with new behavior that proves a conscious decision to turn away from sin. So then, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. But you still have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes, that is, contaminated their character and personal integrity with sin. And they will walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy, they are righteous. We all know that the day we received the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal savior, we became his temple. Actually, the Bible says, don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Therefore, even as we go through these verses, I want you to have it at the back of your minds that we are not talking about a building. We are talking about people. Buildings don't repent. Buildings don't arise. So I'm talking about you. I'm talking about myself. So it is you. We are the church. And this expectation or this report is about you and it is about me. And in verse 1, it says, and I want to start in the second line, where it says, I know your deeds. You have a name, reputation, that you are alive, but in reality, you are dead. It may look a contradiction that the Bible is saying you are dead, yet the messenger is speaking to them. And this morning, According to the word of God, I could be talking to dead people. Because they had a fake reputation. That they are living, yet they were dead. Thank God that you are listening and you are hearing me this morning. Because that in itself is an indicator that there is hope. Reputation. 
And as I read these verses, I got interested and I wanted to know what definition of the word reputation. And I just picked one of them. And this is what he says. Reputation is what someone is known for. And this morning I want to ask you, what do people know about you? What are you known for? This church was known of good things, but as far as God is concerned, he was something, seeing something different. And this morning, I want you to answer two questions. What do people know you for? A second question is, and what does God know you about? What can God say about you this morning? Because the Bible says, human beings look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Human beings are limited. They don't know what you do in the dark. They don't know what you do when you go to your house. But God sees you. The Bible says to him, darkness is as right and right is as darkness. In other words, there is nothing we can hide from God. And to this church, the Bible says that they had a reputation. And I said the church is not a building. That they are alive, yet they are dead. It continues to say, wake up and strengthen and reaffirm what remains of your faithful commitment to me, which is about to die. For I have not found any of your deeds completed in the sight of my God or meeting his requirements. And as I was thinking about this church, which the Spirit had a message that they were dead, yet they, were, they thought or they had convinced themselves or convinced people that they were living. I got interested and I wanted to know, then what makes a living church? What can make you a believer when you say you are living, for sure you are alive? And you know, in my, in my language, they say, you borrow firewood where there is fire. So I decided to look to the New Testament church, which was very successful. We all know many good things about the, the, even in spite of the hard times they went through, the persecution, it was a very powerful church. And I'm here to submit to you, and as a formula, that you embrace this, these things, the new church, the old, the, that church, the acts, the church in the New Testament, you dare them and you do what they did, you are assured of the outcome. Number one, about the New Testament church is that they were full of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, they had been told to tarry and on that day they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The New Testament church was birthed when the Spirit came. And let me tell you, you will come arrive when you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Actually, after they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible records that they started witnessing with a lot of boldness and courage. And I'm here to tell every believer, everybody listening to me, for you to live, to be alive and be really alive, and God will acknowledge you are alive, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. It is a gift from God, and as a believer who has received Jesus Christ, you qualify for the same. Therefore, this morning, if you so desire, you can ask God, you can ask your cell leader, you can ask your pastor, you can ask your friend to believe with you and pray for you for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Every believer must get a feeling of the Holy Spirit. And because you are still in this world, after being filled with the Holy Spirit, you will need many refills. And that's why we keep on coming to church. And maybe one of these days we should have a Holy Ghost rally. And just come for a filling and a refill. If you have ever been filled, you come for a refill. If you have never been filled, then you receive the filling of the Holy Ghost. A mark of the New Testament church. They were full of the Holy Spirit. Something else about the New Testament church. They were a praying church. Actually, at some point, there were some murmurings in the church. But the apostles came out, out 
high tree and they said they wanted to appoint other people because they wanted to concentrate on two things, prayer and the word of God. And I'm here to submit to you, if you are going to remain alive in your faith and not have a fake reputation, you need to have moments of prayer. And I'm here to encourage somebody. Actually, Jesus said at some one point, and he never had many of such opportunities. One day he walked in the temple and he found people doing businesses. And the Bible says he was annoyed. And he whipped many people. And he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And you are the house of God. You have to be a praying Christian. You are either praying or playing. Never mind. It's a tongue twister. But I hope you get the message. And I want to ask you. How is your prayer life? Do you have a prayer closet? Let me come closer. Last week I came, I was studying outside here, the cathedral. One, I can't remember what day it was. I was waiting for somebody. Then a lady walked in. And she was, so, she was smiling, but I, don't, I realized I don't know her. She came and greeted me and said, I know you don't know me, but I know you. Actually, I know this church. Since the time you were meeting, then she pointed to me the classes down there. And she said, then I told her, it's a good opportunity. Now I will know you. She told me her name. Then she told me, I used to live near here. I have now relocated. She told me a certain place, not very far from Zimmerman. She, has, she now has a home there. She doesn't worship in this church, but she is a field person. And she told me, I love your church. And I love what is happening here. May the Lord bless the bishop. Because when I go around my businesses and I realize I've finished early, I just drive into this compound, go to one corner of your church, have my good time with Jesus, then I drive out and go home. That is not a member of Deliverance Church Zimmerman. And she is known by this cathedral. Does this, can this cathedral accuse you that you come to use it and connect with God? Does it know you? Or it only knows you on a Sunday? How I pray. You may not be able to fit maybe in the prayer, uh, uh, power of prayer on a Monday. Or even a Wednesday. But there is that hour when you can find your way. You can have a crosset in your house. I want to submit to you this morning. For you to remain a living Christian prayer will not be an option. Lack of prayer will make you stagnant. Lack of prayer will make you barren. When you come before God and connect with him, there is an exchange. And you are able to be fruitful. One other mark of that successful church is that they honored the word of God. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. Let's start from verse 3. These are the apostles. And this is what they said. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and, and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them. Verse 4. And we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. It is not possible for you to be Alive as a Christian, a successful Christian, minus the word of God. The word of God, the voice of God. The Bible says in um, Psalms 32 verse 8 that he will guide us. How will you be? Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Minus the word, you are walking in darkness. No wonder the heaven can come and tell you you have a reputation, but a fake reputation. That you are living, but you are actually dead. Another mark. There are many marks, but I only wanted to mention five. I've already told you three. I've talked about being filled with the Holy Spirit. I've talked about prayer. I've talked about the word. The other mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Signs and wonders. Let me tell you, as far as you are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, you have embraced prayer, and there is word. Signs and wonders and miracles will become your lifestyle. It doesn't matter where you be. In your business, you will have a testimony when you meet what God did for you. Signs and wonders. 
Can you imagine if you had so many miracles that God has done for you in the course of the week? I have got so many. And when we meet on Sunday, there is a lot of celebration in the house of God. How I pray that we are going to embrace what they did. We do copy and paste. I can assure you, restoration and demonstration will become your song in 2020. Signs and wonders. Actually, in Psalms, Acts chapter 2, verse 43 to 44, it says, A sense of awe was felt by everyone, and many wonders and signs, attesting miracles, were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed in Jesus as Savior were together, and all things in common, considering their possessions to belong to the group as a whole. And that one takes me to the fifth mark, and that was fellowship. Let me tell you for you, to be a, a living Christian and be a fruitful Christian and be a bold Christian, you need fellowship. Thank God for Sunday. Because on Sunday we, we do two things. We worship God and we fellowship with one another. But in the course of the week, you will need to be connected. You have to be dumbbell. I see when you go to Java and you order for a cup of coffee or a cup of hot chocolate they asked you single or double it is because double has more so if you are a single christian and i know i'm talking to several single christians here ask me how i know i never see you on wednesday i never see you on monday you have to be more than double for you and for a restoration to be your story in 2020, being single is a disadvantage for you. You need to be connected to a smaller group. You need to be connected to smaller groups of men, smaller groups of ladies, home cell. You can't tell us the way you are successful and you are a single. Tell your neighbor, first of all, ask them, are you double or single? Ask your neighbor, are you double or single? Whatever the answer they have given you, tell them you need to be more than double. Double is the bare minimum. You need to be more than double. What I mean is you have to connect with others. The Bible says, walk with the wise and you will be wise. So walk with others who are, enjoy, who are celebrating. You will be next in celebration. Because they will charge you because God is no respecter of persons. You will be able to say, if he has done it for my brother, he can do it for me. How I pray to the believers listening to me this morning. As part of your capacity building in 2020, to be able to withstand the restoration God will give you, you will decide to become double. That be, fellowshipping with other brethren will not be that optional. Belonging to a home cell will not be optional. Belonging to a smaller group will not be optional. If the disciples did that, actually because life is in the smaller group, that is where they will know you are in hospital. That is where they will know your child is sick. That's where they will know your child was going to high school and you were fired from your job the other day. That's where they will know many details and they will be able to support you as you support them. Therefore, in 2020, year of restoration and demonstration, you cannot afford to be single. You have to be double. If you believe it, you can say amen. Amen. We go back to our verse. I was only addressing the, the first R, which is fake reputation. And it says in verse 2, verse 2, that is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 2. Thank God because there is hope. There is remedy. Tell your neighbor remedy. And this is the action point. Hey, are you seeing? It's not only mine. Can we read together? Wake up and strengthen and reaffirm what remains of your faithful commitment to me, which is about to die. For I have not found any of your deeds completed in the sight of my God or meeting his requirements. Hold it there. Who is waking up? 
Who is waking up? Who is strengthening? God. Wake up. It is you. This is the action point. This is what God is asking, the Spirit is asking you to do. Wake up and strengthen and reaffirm what remains of your faithful commitment to me. Which is about to die. Are you going to watch your car dog die, die until he's dead? For I have not found any of your deeds completed in the sight of my God or meeting his requirements. There is an assignment for you. You want to change your fake or negative reputation, fake in that people think you are saved and you know you are not. You want to have a turnaround. There has to be an action point. There is a remedy which is wake up and strengthen and reaffirm. Praise the Lord. I wanted to know the, the dictionary definition of, of um, remedy. Which is where we are taking responsibility of our actions. And amongst many definitions I got is that something that corrects or counteracts. Another definition was, Rigo means to recover a right or to prevent or to obtain redress for a wrong. This morning, God expects you. He's saying there is a remedy. You take responsibility, you will salvage your dying candle. Because he wants you to complete. There are some assignments you are given. It's only you who knows. God gave you the assignment. Not Bishop Kemani. Not Pastor Mwashigadi, not Pastor Millicent, not Pastor Kebera, not your cell reader. God gave you the assignment. And this morning he's saying, you are deeds which is about to die. For I have not found any of your deeds completed in the sight of my God or meeting his requirements. Some of the assignments, you are the one who knows. You better wake up and purpose to complete it. And I want to go to the last one. Second last R. I have got good news. There is a remnant. I know in this and maybe by the grace of God the remnant has have preserved our church. Those people have said that I will stand in the gap. There is a remnant. I also wanted to know the definition of remnant. And this is what one of the definition, a small portion remaining of a larger thing or a group, a residue, a remainder, small thing. The remnant are usually few, but the spirit is saying all of us, as many are hearing me, you can become part of that. And that's why it says in verse 4, but you still have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes that is contaminated their character and personal integrity with the sin, and they will walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy. You are here, you are listening to me, and you know you have been in touch. You know by the grace of God, you can tell God, I try. You can't be excellent, but you try, and God honors effort. He knows you are a prayer warrior. He knows you love his word. You say, evening and morning, you will hear my voice. And for sure God hears your voice. Do you know there are some of us here. God has not heard your voice today. But thank God there are remnants. And even if you are not. You can become one this morning. And why you need to change your ways. And change your behavior like we have read in verse 3. It is because of the last uh, sentence of that verse. Verse 4. Project for us, verse 4. Why you need to desire to be part of the remnant? The small portion remaining of a larger thing is because there is a reward. Tell your neighbor there is a reward. And the reward is down there. Remember we are believers. We are eternal beings. We are here, but this is temporary. We are saved because we want to enjoy eternity. And the Bible says, the Spirit said, and they will walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy. How I pray to the people.
for listening to me this morning. You will desire that God can say you are a worthy. And he is looking forward to work with you dressed in white. That he will enjoy saying, well done, good and faithful servant. And that is why. Actually, the reward. I also wanted to know the definition of a reward. There were many, but I picked one. Something of value given in return of an act. Because of your action of receiving Jesus and remaining faithful, there is a reward of eternity for you. And I desire that all of us will desire not to be, not, you know, actually it is very sad. In one of the churches he has said, he will spill them from his mouth. How I pray that you will not be so stubborn until God decides to spill out of his mouth. But rather, we will do what we read in verse 2. We will arise, awaken, and strengthen, and reaffirm, and complete our assignments. And then we will qualify to walk with him dressed in white on that day. How I pray that, that you will be ready. I want all of us to arise. And we will sing that song one more time. Take my life. And now you will sing with that, with that understanding that you cannot fool God. You can fool us. And we can have that fake reputation. But you can never fool God. Thank God that he is giving you a second chance. You can. There is a redress. There is a remedy. But it will call for you, you taking personal responsibility. Nobody can do that for you. Nobody can accomplish your assignment. At your best, you can only accomplish your assignment. How I pray that you will desire to be among, that the Lord will walk dressed in white. So, as we sing that song, that it will be total surrender. What I get is that God wants you or you, not half of you. Therefore, as you say, Take my silver and my gold. And sincerely you know. Even today when the bishop said bring your sword, you know you have it. And you are being told you bless somebody with eternity. They will lead and their lives can be turned around. You don't want to be part of that. Are you sure you qualify to say not a might will die with hold? Yes, you can. But after repentance. I'm glad that I remember the words. Repent and change your behavior. You can't see, you don't qualify to sing for that song. And you know, even 10%, which you know it is a tithe. You don't give. You give when you feel like. But thank God, he's asking us to repent, turn around, and there is hope for us.